today I am simply I'm going to show you. I'm going to show all of you how to make art with a, a computer. So here we are in automatic one 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 one. Do I miss anyone? Web UI. If you're unfamiliar, it's a free browser where you can run stable diffusion, no compute units, uh, no monthly mid journey fees or dream studio generation tokens, and whatever dolly tube, blah, blah, blah. Pay me, pay me, pay me. So Not it is pretty much this UI. I'm going to go over the text to image portion, which originally I was not going to go over, but I wanted to make sense for my next tutorial, which you'll need to know how to use this. But a lot of people have made tutorials on this. So, and I like to make tutorials either improving on techniques or showing something completely unique before bigger channels come and just copy it. I'm trying to spread oh, the creative fancy. knowledge. So let's see if I could just show you some quick techniques. So you can make some AI generated art for free locally on your computer. You need, I think it says a minimum four gigabytes VRAM. I'll post a link in the description showing how to install this. And uh, let's get started. So tech prompts here work pretty much the same as in a deformed notebook or any notebook for that matter, or app and all that, except there's actually a negative and a positive section here. So as you can see, I have Jennifer Lawrence, the Joker from The Dark Knight, portrait, highly detailed, et cetera. Et cetera. You know, all the typical generic uh, AI prompts. We got Greg Wachowski, never heard of him until AI came out. Alphonse Muka, poster artist. Now he's in every single text prompt I ever see. But anyways, they got good results. So we have this here. Sorry, Art Jim, I forgot to mention you. You're also pretty darn cool. Didn't know who you were until AI came out, but you're actually an amazing artist. So where I got this, you can add your own style. So anytime you like this prompt and this and that, you can hit create style and it'll save this. So in the future, you come on here and you have all these cool things like Travis. What's Travis? We'll never know, will we? And then we have the negative prompts here where it's like text, signature, watermark, lettering. These are all things you don't want picture of Jennifer Lawrence. I should have added toothbrush in this text prompt. Otherwise, here's another thing too that's pretty cool. You click on this little Bob Ross palette thing here and then boom, Brian Hitch. I have no idea who that is, but he's an artist. I'm sure he's great. Now I'll look him up on Google. But say your brain doesn't want to work. I mean, we're using AI. So our brains, won't even, we won't even need to use our brains in the next six months, most likely. So we can go click on it a bunch of times. Look, whoa. whoa. <laughs> bunch of people I don't know who they are but I'm sure they're great artists but that's a good way to like change up your style now this little button can work some magic too so if in your settings you tick this box create a text file next to every image with generation parameters which I normally have checked I'll leave it I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download my settings a link to my settings but see if you delete all this and now this was the text file from an earlier generation copy that paste it here look at all this mumbo jumbo then you hit this box with the blue arrow whatever white arrow on the blue box and it just puts all the settings in for you so you just go right to generate and that's it another trick is if you go to png info now let's take the actual picture and drag oh, what that? It oh, my God. drop it in and then same thing boom did all that but it won't have that unless you have this checked in your your settings save text information parameters as chunks oh. to png files you know so make sure that's in your settings like i said i'll leave a link in the description if you want to download my settings so if you're familiar with any notebooks the forum disco diffusion any of that stuff you'll you'll know right away sampling steps what they mean you can go obviously to whatever number you desire, run different tests, this and that. Sampling methods here, they're all a little bit different. I mean, I usually stick to the first few. I mean, you could try them all out. They're all a little bit different. Width and height, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. You can go pretty large with this. So, but then you might get a mirroring effect where this high res fix would come into play. So it's like, if you're going this big, I mean, you tick on this, Supposedly it fixes it. I mean, I've tried it. It works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes, but it's there. 
That's always nice to have something there for you. You never feel alone. So sad and so. So then alone. restore faces. Now, if you click on this, this will help restore faces. Hit the generate button. And as you can see, I mean that uh definitely needs some restoration. So let's see how it comes out. You know, I feel like when I met her, this look is pretty much what's going on inside of her at all times. Jennifer? Sorry, love. Didn't exactly fix her teeth, it made her eyes a little better. It works in some cases. Other times it doesn't. In the settings, you could tweak different ways to do it, but I, I don't really use it that often. Tiling will create more of like a pattern, so I guess you could use it in, you know, Photoshop or if you want to make a sweatshirt covered in jokers of Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. you can do that because it'd be a flawless, create a nice flawless pattern, I guess. Or you can make a 3D texture to be used in Blender or Cinema 4D, whatever. Everybody needs a, a joker. Jennifer Lawrence sweatshirt. Bobby. And a uh, CVG scale pretty much measures how much prompt goes with your text. I mean, it's like I said, it's similar to notebooks. Same concept. Seed, same concept. If you hit the die, it's minus one, which is random. If you hit the recycling thing here, it brings back your seed. And you have this extra features where you can play around. If you're doing like a batch or something, you know, and you want to uh, do little variations. So this is a really cool feature too that, you know, isn't available in notebooks and Deforum and all that stuff. And uh, the XY plot, which is, I've only started running locally recently. And, and uh, this has helped me so much. I mean, you could set, for example, your seed, your step, your seed, whatever. Type in by comma 20, 40, 75, CFG scale. I did, for example, and then you generate it and it gives you this cool little graph type chart. I mean, this in animation, especially this saves me so much time because I like, get a basic look instead of just running this and that and this and that. So look at that, like 15 to 20 steps is this or CFG three to 40 is this. I mean, what a great time saver and definitely an advantage of running locally over the notebooks. So this is how the prompt matrix works. You see all these uh, cute little pit bulls or American Strafford Triers. Yeah, someone's going to leave a comment about that pronunciation. So I have here a painting of a happy pit bull <laughs> in the style of, you see, you have a vertical bar, Dali vertical bar, Picasso vertical bar, Basquiat. And it created this cool little matrix here. And now you want to see it goes from the just a painting of a dog and then painting of a dog or a pit, happy pit bull in the basket style and then mixed with Dali and then Picasso and you see how this chart kind of works. So it's a cool way to just uh, you know, get a quick idea of different things when you're using different text from. Here's a little bonus feature that is also free with this web UI. Everyone always asks me which I use Topaz or After Effects or this or that to scale. So we have this beautiful portrait of uh, JLAK Jennifer Lawrence and you can send it to different areas which we'll go over in a second but send to extras now look at that whoa sent it over to this other section extras and there's all these upscalers in here so I mean you can crank it up to four times the size you can see already that Emma Watson has gotten the Joker treatment but um yeah so you have all these different upscalers you know this is for face cleanup different stuff like that and it's pretty much if you just want to upscale stuff for free through this browser, look at that. I mean, it came out pretty good. Now, I mean, you also have a batch process. So say you have 50 AI images you want to turn into t-shirts or whatever. Here you go. All free. Okay. Okay. We'll stop picking on Jennifer Lawrence. Thank now you. we have Cara Della Vigne, violin. And um, we turned her into the Joker. And, yeah, it's actually pretty fitting. But um, we're going to do image to image. So right away we'll go to send to image to image or IMG to IMG. And look at that, now we're here. So I'm not gonna get into in paint and all this stuff. It's really cool, but there's just so many people have done tutorials on it. Seek them out. They they put a lot of time into it. Recently I did a tutorial using batch to batch to simulate kind of a video input the same way you would do it in Deform Notebook, but locally using Dave Fusion. You know, I know it adds a few more steps and it's simplified so some people were not as happy with it but other people were happy i'm happy with it i'm not spending hundreds of dollars now to experiment with ai so 
that's a great thing. I'll post a link for that in the description. Next, the, pretty much this whole tutorial was to prep you for the next tutorial, which will be covering how to animate locally using this web UI. Hopefully to see you there. I hope this helped you out and everybody have a great day. And I mean, Mm. I am your duck car.